So as we were meditating there over the weekend on Sunday there, yesterday, about uh, Egypt not just being a, a place where the Israelites were enslaved, but it becomes a, a symbol of sin. So being in Egypt or being in Babylon, it means being, being far from God, being such enslaved to your passions and being enslaved uh, in your own mentality, so much so that it separates you from your homeland i.e. heaven, you know, the, the, the promised land. When we, when we don't live according to what the Lord asks of us, we separate ourselves. We, we don't allow him to give us the gifts that he wishes to give us. So we end up without. We end up without a homeland. We end up without a country. We end up without a, a temple. We end up without, as, as, as we read in the prophets, no temple, uh, no prophet, and no offering. So we discover afterwards that that what the Lord had said was true, was right, and if we had listened to him, it would have worked. When we hear this story of Exodus, so Moses is leading the people and he's freeing them from slavery. And keep in mind, this is before the days now of any sort of civil rights activists. There was nobody pleading for the rights of Hebrews. Like, you could be beaten, you could be flogged, you could be... Uh, made an example of by being drowned in front of everyone else and there'd have been no one to you could have complained to. That was like, they could just treat you like dirt and that was it. So the, slavery was bad. And yet, when we hear what the, 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 the Israelites actually say, were there no graves in Egypt that you must lead us out to die in the wilderness? We spoke of this in Egypt, did we not? Leave us alone. We would rather work for the Egyptians. We'd rather be slaves in Egypt and maybe have some sort of a roof over our heads and regular meals rather than walk this way with the Lord and as I was reading this reading preparing the homily what really struck me was this, this, this one thing uh, that they required nothing short of a miracle like there was, there was no other way out of this like you've got the Red Sea in front of you you've got Pharaoh with 600 chariots plus his foot soldiers and like just the, 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 the mental trauma of hearing these horses galloping and the iron chariots and the spikes out of the sides and if you've ever seen Ben-Hur you know, have this, this image of, of you know, the, 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 this dust rising up behind them and like they would just mow through the crowd just ride over people you know and then with their little swords lopping off heads as they're going along like it, it just it's horrible horrible just even to think about it and they had just been slaves, so they, they, they would have been hungry, they'd have been beaten, they'd have been, they, they had never trained as an army. So they were just farmers, just bricklayers. No offense to bricklayers, they're wonderful people, but, but uh, they didn't stand a chance. So, Red Sea in front of you, angry Egyptian army behind you. And just as I was reading this uh, before Mass, just this one line just really, really struck me. And uh, just, no, I'm, I'm no mystic like, but I just really felt the Lord say, if it's a miracle you need, it is a miracle you will get. If it's a miracle you need, it's a miracle you will get. If you need a miracle, you will get a miracle. And even as I just, as, I, as, 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 as that, that word kind of sank into my heart, I thought, well, yeah, thank you, Lord, that's great, but, <laughs> no offense, but there are a lot of people who seem to be in a situation where nothing short of a miracle will, will save them. But in the Lord's mind, you see, in the Lord's divine wisdom, it's, it's not just health in this life that matters. It's not just wealth in this life that matters. It's not just that the things of this world that matter. Ultimately, the greatest good and what he's preparing us for is, is heaven, eternal life. And so sometimes the cross can actually be the greatest blessing to a family. Sometimes the cross can, can be the greatest blessing to, to us as individuals because we discover our own weakness and we discover our need for God. And if I have a need for God, that's, that's such a gift. That's, and it might come through the experience of illness and bereavement or sickness or wherever it may be. But if it's a miracle I need, it is a miracle I will get. And just I was thinking about it like, we are surrounded by miracles and, and actual miracles. I mean, miracles of, of people who were miraculously healed Sure, there was, there, been, uh, there was one girl here in year one who was miraculously healed of cancer. There was another girl who was healed uh, of, of arthritis. There was, an, like, just, just in our little community here, this house itself, the providence, the way it turned up the day after we met the bishop, that's a miracle. 
the, the, the providence that we experience on, on a regular basis, a daily basis through, through benefactors, like that's all miraculous. And then there are miraculous healings. And then there are some people, yes, who, as I say, need a miraculous healing and maybe aren't getting it. I mean, think of a good friend of my own family's at home, a, a lady who had cancer of the throat. So they had to cut off a part of the throat, but then to rejoin it, they have to actually open you up, lift up your stomach so that the pipes will, the pipes will connect again, and then stitch them back together. Like, uh, it's very very difficult and complicated and risky surgery. And we might say, well, look, why can't God just work a miracle and, and, and be done with it, be, be healed and be all to be fine? If it's a miracle we need, it's a miracle we'll get. But if we don't get the miracle, it's because we don't need it. God has a plan for, for the cross. God has a plan for that experience of, of illness or sickness or weakness. God has a plan for it. So when we imagine... And the people of Egypt here, that there are two attitudes we can have. I was thinking there earlier, if you've ever seen um, the original um, Augustus Gloop, uh, Willy Wonka, Willy Wonka, where some of the kids that get invited into Willy Wonka's chocolate factory are the most obnoxious, spoilt little child. What's the, the one begins with V, Veronica, Ver, Veruca. That's what a great name. We should bring that one back. Veruca, uh, right? Who says, I want it now, I want it now. So there's an attitude that we can have maybe towards our parents that my parents will give me everything because I just ask them. I just ask them and they give it to me. And they should give it to me because I, I deserve it. Okay, that, that's that stinking attitude of a spoiled child where they have a kind of a confidence in their parents, but it's not a confidence that comes from respect and it's most definitely not a confidence that comes from love. It's a confidence that comes from, if they don't, I will kick up such a fuss and cause, so, I will make their lives hell until I get what I want. Because I, no, 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 I didn't get what I want. And then there's another attitude. There's the attitude of, of the loving child who has profound confidence in mom and dad because mom and dad have always been there for me. They have always been there for me. And so if mom asks me to take cod liver oil, I can stand the stuff. But if mom asks me to do it, then I know it's for my good. And I know that I can ask mom for the new pair of shoes or the, the, the new school bag or the new bike. I can ask, and if, if, if it's for my good and they as good parents will know, then they, I might have to wait. They might have to hold off on the gift maybe for Christmas or my birthday or something. I mightn't get it immediately. But I get what's good and I get it at the right time. So that's, I think, how we can see how we can look at God. Why? Because in our, in our gospel, some of the scribes and Pharisees spoke up. Master, they said, we should like to see a sign from you. Miracle, please. Miracle. That's kind of the spoiled child attitude, where you, just, you tell God what to do. Sorry, no, we, we want a miracle now. No, that's not the way it works. That's not how it works. And Jesus said, it is an evil generation that asks for a sign. The only sign that would be given is the sign of the prophet Jonah. Which was what? Well, he's talking he's, talking about Jonah foreshadowing his own passion, death and resurrection for as Jonah was in the belly of the sea monster for three days and three nights so will the son of man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights so the sign you will be given is my passion, death and resurrection that's the miracle that I will give you now it's still a miracle, it's not the miracle they asked for they, they, they wanted some sort of a sign, some sort of a you know, heal someone or make someone, bring someone back to life or something, just some sort of a sign that's the spoiled child attitude not the loving son, the loving daughter attitude. So it's a miracle. if it's a miracle we need, it's a miracle we will get. But we always approach this issue, which is always a very sensitive one, because we know people who are sick and who have cancer and who are in terminal stages of, of various diseases. If it's a miracle I need, if it's a miracle we need, need, it's a miracle we'll get. And if we don't get it, it's because God has a bigger plan. God has a better plan. And as faith-filled children, we trust that the Lord will give us what we need when we need it. The Egyptians had just seen miracles. They had seen uh, the, 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 the column of fire before them at night, the pillar of cloud. They had seen all of these, like they, they had seen the, the Passover. They had, they had been freed like, from an impossible situation. So rather than saying, you know, why have you let us out here to die? It's like, Lord, you have been faithful to us. 
so far. We know you will be faithful to us to the end. Whatever you want, Lord, whatever you ask, whatever you desire of us, we know is for our good. And so if, you, if we are to die here in the wilderness, so be it if it's, your, if it's your will. But that's not what happened. He freed them. Red Sea parted. Manna every day. Quail when they got bored of manna. Water when they were thirsty. But always preceded by them giving out to God like spoiled children. So we can be confident in God's goodness. Not because we'll kick up such a fuss if we don't get it that he'll have to. But because he's a loving father. And so if I approach him as a loving son, then I too can hear the words that Moses addressed to the people. Have no fear. Stand firm. And you will see what the Lord will do to save you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will do the fighting for you. You only have to keep still. Amen.